So here's a good way to see through seeking. It's just relax and go through the senses and see if there's anything to seek. Like, you know how people are seeking things like drugs, love, happiness, friendship, acceptance, fame, career, achievement, money, enlightenment, recovery, self-improvement, all those things. The seeking is based on the idea that there's something missing. So if you dispel the notion that something is missing, or then you, then you dispel the seeking. And for something to be missing, it would have to be outside of experience. So if you find that everything is within experience, presently, then there can be no more seeking. It's, it's very logical, actually. But you have to get into it with your experience, too. You can't just think of it logically. You have to look. So let's look. Start with just your eyes and look at color. Notice how an array of color appears. And without labeling them, just look and watch one color bleed into the next color. And see if it's possible to seek the appearance of color. Or if, in fact, just color appears immediately to experience. It just appears effortlessly. There's nothing that you have to do. The most that you would have to do is open your eyes, which is not effort at all. When you close your eyes, there's just black, and that appears effortlessly. Nothing to seek there. When you open your eyes, color appears. But you see, the th the, your, eye, your eyeballs aren't thinking. Your eyes are just presenting color. It's the voice in your head that presents thoughts, which are objects. The voice, meaning either thoughts, or excuse me, words or pictures. The thought stream is either in words or pictures. Words are just words, like, I ran to the store. Pictures are literal pictures of things, like drawings and images. Your, eyeball is, your eyeballs, or vision, you could say, is not doing either one of those things. It's not giving you words or pictures. It's just giving you the raw experience of color and shape. Look around and just let one color bleed seamlessly into the next color, and that color bleeds seamlessly without labeling them. And notice that you can't seek the appearance of color. There's nothing to seek because it's immediately effortlessly appearing. Then close your eyes and listen. Listen to the sounds in the room, the air, the sound of my voice, and notice that you can't seek hearing. Just as you can't seek vision, you can't seek hearing, because hearing immediately appears to experience. So it can't be sounds that you're seeking, just as it can't be vision, uh, excuse me, it can't be colors and shape, it can't be sounds, because sounds are right here immediately appearing to appearance. Your ears aren't thinking. Hearing doesn't think. What thinks, again, is the thought stream made of words and pictures. So with your eyes closed, you can see that there are words. Your mind might be giving you words like, Scott Killaby is full of crap, or isn't this cool, or whatever. Those are words that might give you pictures, like it might give you a picture of my body. Even with your eyes closed, like a mental imprint or memory of my body with my mouth moving. And it seems like the sound is definitely coming from that mouth. But you can see that what you're looking at is a mental picture. It's not me. It's a, it's a representation or an image. Just let the image relax. Stare right at it without judgment. Just let it relax or melt into the space. And now you hear just the sound itself, the sound of the voice. There's no object around it. It's just like it's in formlessness. So notice that what was happening was that thought was painting the picture of something separate here, a body that was talking. But your ears themselves, or you could say hearing itself, does not think. It just presents the raw experience of sound. So you can't seek sound because it's 
appearing effortlessly. So whatever you're seeking in life, it can't be vision and it can't be hearing. It must be something else. So if you go to your fingers or any kind of touch sensation with your arm or your body or a tingling in your body, inside or out, any kind of physical sensation like tactile, notice that your fingers or whatever is touching something doesn't think. Thinking all happens in the words or the pictures. But the raw sensation of touch, like if I touch this, see with my eyes closed, there's just, there's still a mental picture of fingers in a picture, a picture of fingers and a picture of a wallet. But that's just a memory. It's a thought. So if I just look at that and it starts to relax or melt into the space, there's just being without lines and divisions. And the experience of touch doesn't, fingers don't think. So all I'm experiencing is the raw sensation of touch, like hanging in formlessness. There's no object, either no hand as an object or person, and no object as a wallet, because those are all thoughts and they've now relaxed. If it still seems like you're touching something, whether it's a table, it just means there's a mental imprint, a thought happening, a picture, because your fingers don't think. And you can't seek the tactile sensation of touch because it's presently appearing, no matter what you touch. It's just presently appearing. You can't seek experience through, through touching or whatever else. So you can't seek through vision, because it's color already here effortlessly. You can't seek what you're hearing because it's immediately already appearing to present experience and you can't seek through touch. So whatever you're seeking must be in some other place. It must be happening some other way. And if you look, it's actually happening essentially in the thought stream. So if you close your eyes and just start to look at your thought stream, imagine the thing that you want in your life. <laughs> Do you hear the sound of that? You can't tell what that is with your eyes closed. But that's somebody speaking. In the background, you don't know what that person looks like, but you see how the mind might feel in the details. I don't know if you can hear that. It'll make up how the person looks because it, the mind places an object with sound. See that? But the sound itself of just that person talking is just the immediate experience of sound happening to awareness. But whatever we're seeking, it must be something other than color and sound and touch. If you notice it's something in your mind, so you envision something in the future, like a better image of yourself, or a richer image, or a more knowledgeable version of yourself, or more famous, or enlightened, or recovered, or whatever, and it's a mental image, a picture. It might bring about a feeling in the body, like a warm, tingly feeling. It's like something, something later is going to be so much better than our present experience. And there might be some words that go along with it, like a commentary, like, wow, oh, won't that be nice? Or, I'm not there yet. But those are just words. Here's what I want you to see. Is that those mental pictures that you're conjuring up are just like colors and sounds, and that they're immediately appearing right here to experience, to awareness. There's a pictures or the words of what it is you're looking for. But it's not actually happening in the future, and it's not the future. They're mental pictures and words that are happening in present experience, and therefore you can't seek it. Because you can't seek what is already presently appearing. No matter how you conjure up the future, it's still just a picture or a word or a set of pictures or words happening immediately and effortlessly to present experience within awareness. So the seeking happens is because there's like a dream. It's like Beyond the image and the words, there must really be something out there that I'm seeking. But there isn't. There's nothing beyond the image and the words. And when you see that, then you see that all of the experience is right here. And therefore, there's nothing to seek. We've gone through all the modes, and there's nothing to seek. Through vision, hearing, touch, and thinking. Even if, the, even if you get a warm, fuzzy emotion, even if there's some emotions involved, like something to the future, 
in the future that comes up with the images or the thoughts, those emotions, those energies in the body are happening right here in present experience. You can't seek those either. So everything is fully online presently. And that's what waking up is, that realization. That's why the seeking ends. And by the way, that's why the, suffer the separation is seen through because even the separate people that you're experiencing or that you think you're experiencing are the separate things are all immediately appearing, first of all, to your present experience, either through color and shape immediately appearing, sound, like the sound of my voice, and thoughts and images. Everything that you know of Scott right now, for example, is color immediately appearing, sound of my voice immediately appearing. You can't seek this. And whatever thoughts or pictures you have about me, memories you have about me, or whatever. So everything is fully within your experience, directly appearing to awareness, inseparable from that which is experiencing it. If you find a line of division or some sense of separation between yourself and me, it means you're imagining yourself as being one of the images. So if you close your eyes, you can see there's the body image of yourself. You see that? There's an image of the outline of your body. You see that? Well, look, that's actually just another mental image happening. The outline of that body is something appearing to what you are, appearing within experience, giving you the impression that you are that image. But you're not an image. You're what's looking at the image. You could say you're awareness, but you're what sees that image. So you and all the thoughts that you have about you, like that you're a good person, bad person are all words appearing presently to your experience here within awareness. And all the thoughts and images that you have about other people, like the image that you have of me, the thoughts you have of me, all are appearing within that same experience. You can see there's the picture of you, and then there's the picture of me all happening here within your experience. The more you look into that, you can see that nothing Nothing is outside of experience, so it comes back to that question of once you see everything is in experience, presently, effortlessly appearing, even the good stuff, I mean, even the bad stuff, even the awful feelings like anger, frustration, loneliness are all energies here in the body. And if you don't try to do anything with them, there they are, just energies appearing as part of the tapestry of present experience, just allowed to be as they are. That's just part of experience. Everything is within awareness. Even your doubts about it. If you have a doubt about awareness, like this, like he can't be right about this. Your doubt is appearing presently. Look at it. It's like a series of words. I doubt what he's saying, or he's, this is stupid. Those thoughts are appearing. Even if doubt somehow manifest in the body as some sort of feeling. It's right there immediately to your experience. So there's nothing to seek once you see that everything is already here presently. And that's actually the relaxation. 